They were in Akiki, Chile in 2001. That horror story were about to be uncovered. Literally. You know, Chileans, they got an expression. And I ain't gonna attempt it in their language because I ain't no grease ball. But it goes something like, it's better to bury your problems than to let them rot on the surface. And I guess Julio Perez Silva lived by that advice. And 14 other young girls died by it. I once had a friend tell me when I was talking to him about moving to Mexico and getting a job. He told me paradise is only paradise if you're sitting by a pool with a cold beer. Otherwise, it's just a dry, dusty, sand pit shithole. Which makes me wonder what cab driver Julio Perez Silva thought as he drove his cab around the dusty, garbage-strewn streets of Akiki with teenagers hanging out on every corner, bored, not a penny to their names. Were it hell for him, or a sick man's paradise? No one will ever really know why the 38-year-old unlicensed cab driver who were married with two young daughters started his killing spree when he did. But I guess what we do know, he was first inspired when he saw a 17-year-old Montserrat Saravia standing down near the dockyard, barefoot on a corner, sipping a cherry cola. And I guess if you're looking for trouble, she'd be a good place to start. Part-time stripper, part-time hooker, full-time pain in the ass. Silver told police, that when the young girl smiled at him, he yelled out his window that he wanted to fuck her. It was then that she approached his cab and said that nothing was for free. They agreed on a price. She climbed in and he drove her to a secluded place near the beach. But as he was fucking her, he saw that she was removing cash from his money belt. Enraged, he strangled her to death, then finished having sex with a corpse and dumped the body. And I guess after what must have been his gestation period, he took a year before he struck again, when he spotted 13-year-old schoolgirl Macarena Sanchez walking to school, and he offered her a ride. When she climbed into his cab, little did she know her destination was the abyss. Because once in his love mobile, he drove her 30 minutes outside of town to a deserted area where he held a knife on her and had sex with her, fucking her in every hole you could fuck. Then he tied her by her wrists and while she was still alive, dropped her down an abandoned mine shaft. Locals called it the bottomless pit, but in fact it was 220 meters deep. It was the last you were ever seen. People who knew Silva said he was salt of the earth, one of the good guys, and that the only place he were a threat were on the football pitch where he fanatically played each weekend. And although he did none much, he was never shy to put his hand in his pocket and help his fellow man who was down on his luck. But he put his hand in more than just the pocket of 17-year-old Sarah Gomez. Leaving school, a grandmother had given her money to take a cab because it were her birthday and buses could be unreliable. 
She climbed into Silver's cab, and she will never see it again. At any rate, B and tortured her, and dropped her into the abandoned mine with the others. It was when Silver's wife was doing laundry the day after Sarah Gomez was murdered, and she found shit stains in his underwear where his cock should have been that she started getting suspicious. But maybe 23-year-old mobile phone promoter Angela Calais weren't suspicious enough when she climbed into Silver's unlicensed cab. By his own admission, he'd driven her to the outskirts of town and raped her for over eight hours. And when he could no longer get a heart on, he got frustrated picked up a large rock and started smashing her face and left her at a garbage dump where she were reportedly eaten by wild dogs. They told the court that he believed it one murder because he could hear her yelling for help so she was still alive. They were now just over two years later and 13 young girls had gone missing in the city of Akiki. And police were baffled because they vanished out of thin air. Government said that because all the girls were poor they'd most likely run away to larger nearby cities to become prostitutes. But not all the parents were buying what the government had to sell. People started whispering, probably in Spanish, that there were a serial killer at large. It were on April 17, 2001, when a girl, known as Girl X, walked into the police station and said that she'd been beaten, raped, and tortured by an unlicensed cab driver, who then threw her into a mine shaft, but as she was going down, she held onto the side and didn't come up until he were gone. Problem is, is that he'd beaten her so badly with a rock that she were almost fucking retarded. She couldn't remember what he looked like, but with over 3,000 unlicensed cab drivers in the city, she weren't gonna be much help to the cops. So they scooped out the intruder's jizz and put it on ice till later. But the missing girl's family, they were sick of waiting till later. Cause they knew that their government were just like their god and ignored the poor. It were pretty 16 year old Viviana Garay who was Silver's 14th and final victim. Gary, not from poverty like the other girls, had just left the library studying with some friends and made a last minute decision to take a mini cab instead of call her father for a ride. It was the wrong decision. Cause Silver, like he'd always been, were waiting. And he took the pretty girl for his now infamous tour of the desert. And he dropped a pretty, come riddled corpse into the mine shaft with the other lost souls. But what Silver didn't realize, and how could he, was that one of Gary's friends had seen her get into the cab and took note of the license plate number. And when the girl didn't return home that night, her friend called the police and told them what he'd seen. And it didn't take the cops too long to figure out who the culprit were. And when they knocked on Silver's door and the jizz matched, well, he started singing like a retard with a ukulele. And he even helped the cops find the bodies. Thirteen of them all piled up on top of each other at the bottom of a mine. The other one were eaten by dogs. Don't give up hope cause the river still flows
But we've built up these walls. Of-